How's it going, everybody? I want to help you get better at chess if you're between 800 and 1,000 ratings. So here we go. I picked a game to play against a random person on chess.com, and I'm about to tell you my thought process on how I win these games. Okay, here we go. Somebody from France. All right, he's playing the uh, D4 opening. All right, so it's a five-minute game. Looks like my opponent is playing the stone wall. Okay, so I see that there's a center weakness on e4. I'm just gonna develop my pieces really quickly. So here, bishop f5 makes a lot of sense. You know, you wanna uh, get the bishop out of the house before you close the door. That's what they say. So now I'm gonna close the door, opening the, actually open the door, <laughs> which closes the gate, I suppose. Now this bishop can come out too. Hmm. Okay, so it seems like a3, my opponent's making a lot of pawn moves which is usually not a good sign, not a good thing to do in the opening, too many pawn moves. You wanna move your minor pieces more um, before developing your um, pawns a bit more. Bishop d3, okay, so he's offering a trade. Now I can simply play knight e4 if I wanna decline it or take. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna play knight e4, put the knight on the outpost. If he took that, would double my pawns, so that's why I didn't do it. All right. I'm gonna play knight c6. If he takes with the knight, he's gonna be forked. So I don't really mind that. He takes with the bishop instead. I take here. And now he's you see that his um his pawn is under attack from my queen and everything else. So I'm gonna win a pawn here. So take. So I want a pawn. That's fine. Everything looking good. So far, so good. Knight b3, so he's not really taking my pawn. All right, let's, my pawn is under attack. How about I push this guy up the board? That will save it and get some space. Knight d4, he's attacking my bishop and my pawn. Bishop is already protected. So I can start to save my pawn in this position, since I'm already so ahead, there's a funny little thing I could do. I could try to go for an attack now with the queen. Then he would block, and I go here and sneak in here. That's one option. That's the um, the spicy option. But the more normal option would be to play c5 or bishop c5, keeping the pieces developed. Okay, he takes. Okay, now since he's knight is really stranded, let's go for the attack. So I have three pieces developed, and he only has one. So now I think it's warranted that we go for an attack. Queen is sneaking in here. Queen is one of the best invaders. My brother used to tell me this. Queen is the best invader. Once the queen invades, it cleans up everything. Okay, so I see an opportunity to invade. I don't see why not. Taking the rook. He needs to go here. Ah, oh, I have a few cool things I could try here. One of them is to chase the rook with my bishop, making a battery like that. So that's interesting. That is really good, actually. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Okay, here we go. How on earth does he protect that? Because of our space advantage, I don't even see... Yeah, that's not going to cut it because I check him like this, and then he has to move here, and I take the rook, and it's game over. Yeah. Brutal. His queen has to block, and I take with the pawn. Okay, so let's recap really quickly. What did he do wrong? I think he just uh, made too many pawn moves, and we were really healthy here. And you may be wondering, why did I move my C pawn first before knight? Well, you saw that in the game. You, you can move your pawns that are in the center, because the center part is actually the most important part to fight for. When you move your knight and block your C pawn, it might be, make it hard for you to fight for the center in the future. So I only did this because my opponent wasted so much time, it gave me the luxury to throw that in there before playing knight c6, right? And another thing the opponent made a mistake is he opened the position before, when, before he was ready, right? He was uh, not ready to do this yet because then I am the one that is in charge here. So that's why my opponent lost in this game. Let's go to the next one. Okay, we got another game. This is a thousand rated. I'll include it in the video. D4 again. All right, this time I'll play D5. And then we're going to control the center squares, which is these four. He's playing the queen's gambit. All right, so he, since he wants to take my pawn, 
I will guard it with my pawn. You always want to have a pawn in the center. C5. That is another pawn move. Too many pawn moves. He doesn't really, you know, the benefits does not outweigh the, the cost of the move here. So I'm just going to keep developing. Knight f6 makes sense. And at some point, after I castle, I'm going to break the pin. I'm going to show you a way to um, get rid of this pawn. Okay. That's another thing. It seems like my opponent is spending a lot of tempo. Castle time, you know, safe and solid. Now, once he's done that, all that white has going for him in this position is a space advantage, right? He's pushed his pawn a bit further than my pawns. So I'm going to show you guys how we can gain space back. What, do, what does black have going for him? Is lead in development. We've already castled and got a bishop out. Okay, how do we gain space here? Well, there are two moves, e5 and a5. Both moves are looking good. The most thematic move here is e5. But I want to play a5 first because it's a little trap here. If he plays a3, I could take. And if he takes back, he loses the rook. So I'm going to do both. Now he took. Now what happens here is this. I have a theory of pawns. I consider that the corner pawns are less valuable than the middle pawn. So this a pawn trade for the b pawn is actually like, let's value the, the center pawn as a dollar. This pawn is like, this pawn is 90 cents, 80 cents, 70 cents. So I just traded my 70 cent pawn for his 80 cent pawn. And I open my rook. This pawn is isolated. All right, remember the other pawn, pawn break? E5 time. So what is the point of this move? Pawn breaks are like pawn challenges, are essentially a way to open up your pieces. Okay, he's attacking my rook. Let me guard that with the developing move, right? Quick development. So when I open up my pieces and I'm ready to attack, I can start to infiltrate into the opponent's position, right? So that's the point of pawn break. So the person with more development should be the one that's kind of opening up the position. So that's the point of e5. I'm threatening to take already. So I'm guessing he's going to grab this pawn, but then I would take with the bishop and attack the rook. He didn't do that. Ah, he's trying to be sneaky. He's trying to do a tactic called remove the guard. All right, that's guarding the rook, so he's trying to remove it. So even though we have a plan, we, we should adjust our plan based on our opponent's tactics. So he's threatening to win a rook. Our plan of opening the position, we put it on pause for one second. Although I can get, again, spicy and take, take, take. <laughs> but since it's an educational video, I'm going to keep it a little bit simpler. I'm just going to move my rook back like a normal person, <laughs> okay? <laughs> that was interesting, though, but it was really complicated. We didn't have to do that. It's a good position for black anyway. Okay, take, take. I don't mind the double pawns. Once again, all he's done is move the queen out, and uh, he hasn't castled. He's trying to castle now. Uh, I have this saying in, uh, in my stream, castling is like putting on your pants. And he's trying to put on his pants, but right now he's no pants Jackson. So we need to take advantage of this guy who's not wearing any pants. He's still trying to, oh, we have a really good move here. He, I know he's starting to take this pawn. I don't mind. We had to stop him from putting on his pants. So, how do we do that? Bishop a6. No castle for you. I understand that I'm sacrificing this pawn, but the most valuable thing in chess is the king and the king's safety, right? So, one pawn is not no object here. We want to keep the king stranded in the middle while I you know, try to checkmate it with all my might. So I don't care about a pawn. One point is secondary. So let's see how the opponent deals with this. He develops his pieces. That's a good move. All right, let's put this rook on um, e8. Again, should I keep sacrificing this? I'm thinking I could just play queen d7 as well and guard it now. Hmm. I guess that is the only thing that's going for him. So we could play queen d7. Yeah. Although we could sacrifice as well. Let's sacrifice. <laughs> Rook e8. I, I calculate land. Knight takes c6. Queen d7 attacking the pawn. Then the knight would go back here. Then I have queen to g4 attacking this pawn and threatening a knight attack. And then if he played knight takes d5 after that, I will take this. And if he takes this, I take this. And it's pinned. It's a long line, but I'm, I'm justifying the pawn sack with activity. It'll give me some time to get my queen over to g4. Okay? So I'm predicting he's going to go here. If he goes here, I can play bishop c4. It's no problem. But if he goes to knight d4, we have the queen g4 move, yeah? It's pretty good. The reason I would go bishop to c4 for knight b4 is that I want to keep this bishop alive, so keep the king in the middle. 
another move after knight b4, it's actually play d4, which is kind of a, a fork idea, but I'm going to keep it simple, right? We're going to play bishop c4. Now, there's another good thing about having active pieces. This bishop is so active, it's actually limiting the knight because of the pin. When this knight moves somewhere, there's a potential idea of just taking the rook. Right? So, things are looking good so far. So far, so good. Keep play rook a3. Okay. I could go for the attack move with uh, queen g4 right now. d4 is another possibility. Let's play d4. It's the most thematic move here. Because the um, pawn is, is pinned, he can't take me. And potentially, I could open up the position. The one thing I need to be concerned about is that my queen is undefended. There were some lines earlier which he, he could have probably taken advantage of the fact that my queen was unpinned. So I need to make sure that I don't fall for some, some trick where I lose my queen. So you can see in the in general thinking process, you have a plan, but your execution is very like short-term thinking, right? Like what's under attack, everything's safe, what can I capture, what can they capture, etc. So if I took that pawn, he would take my queen. And that would not be ideal. We don't want that to happen. So I can also take this pawn, I can push. I have so many options. I really like this move because I, I'll, t I'll tell you why in a second. Oh, but then there's another move he could play this. Then it's, it's, it breaks the connection. Although then I can take the rook, then he takes this. That doesn't lead anywhere. Mm -mm. So rook a4 may not work. What's another move? We can go rook to d8. That protects everything. My old move, queen g4, can come in handy here as, to, as well. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. If he castles, I can win a piece. If he takes knight d4, I can take. And if he takes, I take with the queen. His p The pin, he, his pawn is pretty much, you know, like a scarecrow. It's not really there. It's just an illusion. It's not doing anything here. So that's why queen g4 I played. Kind of similar to the last uh, game, right? Queen is the best invader. Once again, we can see Invader Zim. Okay, he played that. Now that the pawn is unpinned, I can go ahead and grab this guy, opening the position even further. I do understand that he can take with the rook, but then I have this open file I can use uh, to my advantage. There are several other moves if rook takes. So here's a part where you had to cut calculating because of so many captures. Um, I see some tactics. The more tactics you do, the, the faster you'll see stuff. Here, rook d8 makes sense, bringing the rook to the open file. The queen, our pieces are so active that the opponent has to defend against so many threats from all angles, right? So an open position favors the, the uh, side with more activity. All right, now it's a, a point of cashing in what we have. All right. So there's a check here, but he can block. That's no good. Can't take that because the rook's there. This doesn't lead anywhere, right? Does not. Hmm. How can I take advantage of this um, active position? I feel like I need I need even more attackers. Kind of strange. I could check to provoke a weakness. Bishop g5 also comes to mind to attack this pawn. I could double rooks. Oh my goodness, I just realized something. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> this is a secret attack. You know, queens moving sideways is a blind spot for everybody, even masters. <laughs> this is like such a good tactic. So you need to be aware of the full board vision, right? I was not thinking about that in the beginning. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, we've cashed our advantage in. It's a fork. Devastation. Yeah, he might resign here. I'm gonna tell you a joke, okay? What does a baby computer call its father? Data. <laughs> okay, we want to. Okay, great. So what happened in this game? Here, uh, he made a lot of pawn moves, right? Well, I was just developing and casting quickly. And eventually, once I was ready, I tried to open up the position myself and gain space back. 
He's still in castle. So I tried to um, prevent his castling with this key move, bishop a6. Sacrificing pawn is okay. And then I, I brought out all my pieces. Once I brought out all my pieces, then I was okay to move the queen again. Right? You can move the pieces over and over again after you develop them once, right? All eight pieces have moved. And then we went for that queen invasion attack. And tactics just magically manifest out of nothing when you have great pieces. Okay, on to the next game. Okay, we got another game. This time we're playing white. Let's play e4. Looks like uh, my opponent is from Vietnam. Okay, e4, e5. I'm going to play classical. Knights and bishops out. Start with the Italian. The Italian is one of my favorite openings because it eyeballs that weak f7 square. So what are you supposed to do in the opening? Get the knights, bishops out, castle, and do it while you're reacting to your opponent's development and threats. So he was attacking my pawn. We're just going to defend it. Castle. Always usually a good idea to castle by move 10, before move 10. The opponent seems to know some theory. I'm assuming he's going to castle. He says he'd like to chat. Okay, I'll accept. He says, dude. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but okay. He says, dude, you're literally more than three times my rating. Okay. So now knight c3 is the most like common move here. Let's play that. I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to distract him from his game, right? Okay, so bishop to g4 is an annoying pin. Let me stop that move. This pin is actually one common pin you can afford to stop by spending a turn. Now notice that I can't do the same thing because of his bishop being here. Now, my bishop might get trapped, so I'm going to play a3 or a4. Either one is cool, just to make sure that it doesn't get harmed by any attacks. Knight d4. He's offering a trade. Now, I don't think this trade is bad for me because it doubles his pawns, and the pawn itself might become a weakness. So let's rotate the knight over here. He's playing, he's playing pretty well. Okay, so he played c5, makes sense. Now, I, if this pawn is annoying to me, I can always give it up, trade it up, but I wonder if we can start like an attack or something. Let me um, do this interesting move. First, I want to go bishop g5. I'll tell you my thought process behind this. This is a potential outpost. So by trading it off, I can rotate my knight over and occupy this outpost. This knight was guarding it. So as an outpost in the center is really valuable for a minor piece, especially if it tends to live there forever. So my dream scenario would be like trading off the bishops and putting the knight there, but I'll be happy with even the knight uh, bishop being there at the end. So let's, uh, should I dump my knight on d5? I can, absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. Dump the knight. So the, my pieces are pretty active. Looking good so far. He's putting some pressure. He's trying to trade it off. Now what I'll do is I'll play f4. Now you're wondering what it is this. Well, I, I've developed my pieces except for this guys. So I want to get some space before deploying them into the game. These pawns themselves could be used as attacking uh, targets. This position is kind of closed, right? So that's why I'm, I can afford to move these pawns. I'm trying to gain some space and uh, kind of do like a pawn storm. Okay, remember the outpost? I wanted my knight to be there, but bishop is also good. This bishop is clearly better than this bishop. Okay, he's starting to do some space gaining here, but you know what? I think my pawn storm is going to be better, more dangerous than theirs. So I have a couple of choices. I'm going to first deploy my queen here. I can also go queen h5, actually. You know, queen h5 is better. This sets a trap. If it goes here, I can actually take that pawn, right, because of the pin. So I was going to go here. I changed my mind to go here because it's, it's an attacking move. Now I have two plans that I'm thinking about. One plan is to go for an e5 break like that, which is nice and quick. I think I'll decide on that one. The other plan was to go for a g4, g5 plan. A little bit more dangerous because my king is also opened. So, okay. Whoa, he made a mistake. 
I wish I didn't play that because now the game is going to end soon, I think. I took a pawn for free, and this pawn was like the glue uh, that was holding his white squares. Now it's all vulnerable. Uh, there's a rule, which I learned when I was a kid, like when there's an opposite color bishops. Yeah, he resigned. Opposite color bishops, the attacker has an advantage. I want to GG, it was a training game for YouTube video. <laughs> I want to tell him that. I'm going to give him a good sport thumbs up. All right. So what happened in this game? I think my opponent played well, well in the opening. He followed the principles. He castled. So see, when you, somebody plays uh, the opening well, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. Now, the change happened once we had this trade. And getting that center outpost was key. And then once we brought our piece in, I guess my opponent couldn't sustain the pressure. At some point, I was thinking of playing that move E5 or G4, G5. White is probably slightly better here. The computer thinks it's, yeah, plus two. Wow, okay, it's pretty good according to the engine. Uh, but, okay. Mm. All right, let us move on. Okay, another game, and let's play D4 this time. Maybe I'll play the London system for you guys. <laughs> All right, here we go. London or London? Find out. Playing somebody from Norway, I believe, yes. Okay, you already played knight c6 and e5. Is this some trap? I don't think so. I think that's a free pawn. Let's see how quickly he plays. He doesn't play quickly. That means that he just didn't count on e5? Yeah. It doesn't seem like it's a trap. Let's make sure, though. He's trying to check me here, which would be a double attack. But his pawn on d5 just also hangs. So I could take that right now, but then he would check me. That's a bit complicated. Maybe a safe move here would be to avoid all that business. And play c3 or knight c3. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> they're both good, actually. What do you do when both moves are good? I'm going to go for the uh, tiebreaker, which is the developing the knight. My opponent offered a draw. <laughs> Decline. So now I'm trying to win this pawn. Okay. I can take with the knight, which attacks his queen. That's a good in my book. And there's a potential fork opportunity. In fact... It's going to be hard for him to protect everything. I think there's only one move here. Queen to d6. Mm -hmm. Which he finds. But that walks into a pinito. Okay, so knight f3. Queen d4 also. It's a nice move. Okay, queen d4. I like it a lot. Because I'm putting the pressure on the pin piece. Put the pp on the pp, as they say. How does he guard this? Also, this move is very strong because I can now castle queenside, which adds even more pressure onto the position. As you can see, when you're in the opening, you're trying to develop your pieces very quickly. Castle queenside. You castle and you get the rook in the game. That's why castle queenside is considered stronger by some people. It's a bit riskier because the king is more airy. It's less tucked away than the king side, but it's more aggressive. There's a famous game, Morphe, uh, Count Dooku. Oh, wait, by the way, is there a sacrifice here? Knight takes c7 doesn't really work. I was checking to see if I could sacrifice my, and then check here. But the king has a has a hole on f7, which doesn't so it doesn't work at the moment. Now I can check anyway. Let me go c6. I don't see a clear like a tactic or anything. So I could continue developing my pieces. His threat is to just trade everything off. That's the only problem here. I don't want to trade everything. Hmm. Sacrificing the knight looks interesting, but very risky. And I don't need to make take a risk at this point, you know? So e4 is not bad. Queen a4 check is interesting. There must be something better, methinks. 
Hmm. Bishop e5, check c6. Okay, there's a cool idea. Um, so the point of bishop e5 check is that when he plays c6, his queen is undefended. That allows me to go knight takes f6 check. Then once knight takes f6 or pawn takes f6, then I take on d6. Then if he takes the bishop, I could take with the uh, like this, right? Rook. And then if he takes this, I, had, I can take this. So I'm winning at least a pawn from all this shenanigans, if not more. So take this. And then take this with the rook after he takes. So I want one pawn and I want one piece. So to reduce, re, uh, to make the equilibrium, he has to take this, but it, it's not going to keep the equilibrium because I'm going to win both of these guys. Hmm. I guess he could put king e7, but I, again, I take this. So if he takes this, it, he does kind of win back the piece, but um, I think I want at least one pawn, right? And I was already up one pawn earlier, so we're going to be up two pawns after all this. So this is a tactical game. I couldn't help myself. This is a tactical game. Okay, he finally moved. Takes, takes. So I'm up two pawns, as we mentioned earlier. Now, what am I lacking here? I'm lacking a lot of development. Tons of development. So that's something I gotta fix. All right. There's another important thing in this position, which is that he might go knight e4, knight g4 to hit my rook. My rook and my rook is in a precarious position. So I'm going to fix that issue by putting it somewhere safe from the king. So now knight g5, have bishop g3, and, and securing the position. By the way, there's another pawn hanging, but this is a classic trap. Fisher lost a game to Spassky like this. Well, he took a pawn in the corner. It's a very famous, uh, it's been covered in many movies. This, it was a bishop takes h2 in that game, but when you take a pawn like this, I can go here and then collect that uh, bishop very easily. Okay, play rook d8. Knight f3 makes sense. It's developing. Just developing. So now we are up to pawn. So maybe what we can focus on in the educational part is how to convert. Yeah, he took the pawn, by the way. <laughs> he couldn't resist it. Remember the Fisher mistake? He made the same mistake. I'm going to uh, get this bishop now. I was going to say that we should simplify. So like this, trade the rooks. Okay. Trade the rooks. Trade the bishop for the knight. And then collect that guy. So simplification is very good, then they cannot counterattack you, all right? I took here because I don't want to give him a passed pawn. So now um, this pawn kind of fends off these guys. Now what do we do when we have an extra knight? Well, we can try to win those pawns, first of all, and then that will create a passed pawn which we can convert into a queen. So that's the usual way to win an endgame, is to make a pawn into a queen at your earliest convenience and try to prevent the opponent from doing the same thing. He's kind of trying to do the same thing, but not really, is he? Yeah, in fact, I'll allow him to take this pawn because it's gonna be kind of funny. It's gonna be like a train uh, a train, train wreck. <laughs> Triple pawn. I think it's called Irish pawns. I don't know why. No offense to anyone <laughs> from Ireland. All right, he resigned. Okay, good game. So there was an interesting moment here, right? With this opening where he played this um, weird move with uh, knight c6 and e5. And I took the pawn, yeah. And was knight c3 correct? Computer likes it. And then uh, knight d5 and queen d4. Computer likes it as well. Castles. And here I was a bit stuck for a move. Bishop b5 is okay. This is plus 1.3. The best move the engine says is queen a4 check and queen a5. Okay, 
or now it's saying then knight here just giving up the bishop and then takes takes and then of course rook d5 and then pin yeah that's very easy to see all that <laughs> okay i did not see that but why does he have to put king f1 oh yeah because king f he could put c6 here as well uh, but then knight ah now it all makes sense now it all makes sense okay moving on okay we got another game and right again let's play e4 this time and good luck to james from the united states Fisher style best by test maybe i'll play a scotch game this time it's a little bit different a little bit more open position we'll go for a scotty james is taking his time scotch opening The reason I'm playing scotch is to get an open game where pieces are very active. One common mistake in the scotch that people make as black is they taking is fine, but then they take a second time, which allows the queen to come into the middle where usually getting the queen out is bad, but in that position, there's no more knight to attack the queen. So very common mistake here is knight d4. And he plays it. You know, I've seen these things. I'm a professional coach. I've seen... I've been around the block a few times, so this is a common mistake. So now our queen is very powerful. It's very hard to develop the bishop. And if knight moved, I would have played e5. So d6 makes sense. Now I should continue developing the pieces. So knight c3 is a normal developing move. I'm guessing he's gonna go knight f6. And then how to decide, do I pin the knight? You know, do I try to play some e5 stuff at some point? Oh, c5. We might have another instructive moment on our hands here. So this weakens the light squares a lot. So an opportunity to throw in a check here to trade off the light square bishops. So that is interesting. I can also just move the queen back and then decide later. So two interesting options. Okay. It's hard to decide that. It really is hard. I'm gonna pick, so difficult. I'm gonna pick the check option. He's gonna block. The point of blocking is after the trade of bishops, this square is gonna be a nice little outpost for my knight. So he's gonna block for sure with the bishop. And I'm wondering if I should take the bishop or if I should save my queen first. So move like Queen d3 is possible here. Then he can take, and the knight take. But my knight might get sidelined. You know, if, there's no guarantee that I'm going to get the pawn because it's protected sufficiently. So I'm just going to grab the bishop check. And then we're going to go possibly queen to d3. And this is a slightly better position for white because this is a backward pawn and I have a nice square. It's probably going to go here. Then I'm going to go bishop to g5. And then he's probably going to go here. And then I'll probably castle one, of the, one way or the other. And I'll put pressure on this pawn. So I don't know if I want to castle uh, king side or queen side just yet. Considering the ramifications of both at the moment. But there's going to be a lot of pressure. Yeah, king, queen side castle seems more uh, appropriate in this position. Because then I even have threats of taking the knight. And when he takes back, the queen could take that guy. Then the rook would take back. So castling makes sense. Wow, he makes a big mistake. I don't have to think twice about this because damaging the pawn structure like that is a huge advantage. Not only because the pawns themselves are weak, also I had the bonus of getting the square to attack this. And this move is like not only wasting a tempo, but making this even stronger. As you can see, pawn moves in the opening can be very, very base baseful. Be very careful when you do that, like especially pawns on the side. Okay, my opponent is just kind of losing the thread of the game, I believe. He's going for a counterattack, but that's just the pawn. Interestingly, my bishop is kind of trapped. But, you know, let's do an oh no, my, oh no, my bishop. <laughs> 
If he takes, I have a queen fork. I understand that he might try to do this. I was simply going to defend this by castling queenside. And I understand that after then if takes, there's no more queen there. But I have a backup fork of the rook. So that's why knight here, the activity of the knight more than compensates. Remember castling? Castle queenside. So now we've kind of defended the bishop with the counter threat of our own. And that is also a very good way to defend if you can, counter threat. Especially if you're in a position of superiority, threatening, uh, defending by counterattacking actually becomes more uh, likely to be successful and appropriate. Once again, the bishop is hanging, but you know what? Let's just do the same thing again. Defend by counterattacking. When you have when you're in a better position, position of strength, counterattacking is much more likely to succeed. So he's probably going to take this guy. And now I will, or that, now I will um, take this pawn. And I like that move. There's another move to take with the rook, which is very spicy. That is very spicy. <laughs> I had to stop myself from, uh, another spicy move was to keep the tension on the board with e5. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do this move. The point is that if he takes, there's a beautiful check, discovered attack, takes, then mate. And if he takes here, check, king here, check, mate, because the queen was protecting this earlier. So this move blocks the queen and, okay, allows me the mate. Beautiful little mate. This is called the opera mate. So when your king is in the open, you want to open files to the, towards the king to take advantage of the uncastled king. That's exactly what's happening here. So, you know, what I wanted to do with the scotch opening really paid off almost prophetically with the, uh, the uh, you know, queen coming out, which was a mistake, right, by the opponent. And then we had this nice little developing move and then trying to get that outpost. Also similar to the first game of this video or second game. We had similar themes playing around the outpost and wasteful moves by the opponent being a big mistake. And uh, one more thing we learned is that we can defend by counterattacking when you are in a position of strength. And e5, opening the center when the opponent did not castle. Another common theme in this video. Okay, opponent resents. Good game. All right, I hope this uh, game's helped you out. Uh, we'll be coming out with more guides shortly. So subscribe and like the video. I've spent a lot of time making this. So thank you very much. I'll see you next time.